Welcome back to Journeying to the Heart of Christ, Conversations in Faith. I have with us today my good friend, Kurt Williams from St. George and St. Barnabas. You are involved in so many aspects of diocesan life, and each time I see you, there's this deep faith. So tell us about your relationship with Jesus, and just daily, how does Jesus move through you? I feel as though it's a requirement mm -hmm. for us to take care of each other and look after each other and do whatever we can to help each other, which is all basically what Jesus told us that we should be doing for each other. And it's not hard, it's just trying to live a decent life and be decent to other people. But as you've heard my saying before about the, um, the shepherd, the sheep, and there's the sheep dogs. Mm -hmm. So someone has to be the sheep dog in that equation. And the person who looks out for people, looks out for the sheep, maybe when the shepherd's not looking, or maybe when the shepherd's taking a rest. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to fill that role. That is beautiful, because that's the call of many of us. You're exactly right. It is that watch, the protection, and to uplift everyone. So I'm always just so moved when I go in to St. George and St. Barnabas. Um, you are actively, both you and your wife, involved in the life of the church, which is the body of Christ, uh, present, and it's in West Philadelphia. And I tell you, it was maybe probably my f first six months, and we toured during my pilgrimage. And I was just taken about this resiliency, and I wouldn't say independence, but this is my church, we're responsible for it, uh, this is where we spread the good news, and we take care of it. And, and it was really just it becoming part of the church. Tell us a little bit about the life of your involvement at St. George and St. Barnabas. Well, my involvement is as the senior warden currently, and we've just concluded our search. We'll be calling our rector within yes. the next month. And um, it's an ongoing process. And like you said, that ownership is a thing that guys with the collars come and go, mm -hmm. but we're gonna be there mm -hmm. regardless. That's our church. Mm -hmm. So when we have a sense of ownership and a buy-in, so to speak, it makes you're vested. You're invested in something. Mm -hmm. It's not just go to Sunday, be a bench warmer, sit on the pew, go home, and forget about it till next Sunday. It's not what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to take the word outside to the world every day yes. with us. So that's how I think that attitude or that sense of ownership that you feel is, is uh, conveyed and is ingrained in every member of the church at St. George St. Barnabas. And you talked a little bit about work in the community recently. We were, that we started St. George and St. Barnabas uh, this March against gun violence. Um, tell me how the church's witness can make an impact. Something that s seems so large and so destructive to the body of Christ. Well, how can they make a difference by being a witness? Well, we started uh, about two years ago when we, uh, with the hashtag wear orange that was a uh that's part of the anti-gun violence movement nationwide but we got involved with it just to make a witness to the neighborhood because it was touching us in such a way and the memorial of t-shirts on the lawn you'd be surprised how many people stopped mm -hmm. and took pictures because on our stretch where our church is there are about seven churches in walking distance so people on their way to their own churches were stopping taking pictures because it was such a meaningful, impactful thing. People were, went to tears, some people, when they saw, and we didn't have all the shirts. We only had 65 mm -hmm. of them. So imagine if we'd have had all 200 or some out there. It would have really been, you know, something. So I think any small church, any small group, if you find a cause, try to find that cause and do it well. My, my role as the senior warden is not to stretch us out too far. We can't, we don't have the manpower to do a feeding kitchen, yeah. but the advocate does a feeding kitchen. So why can't we go help the advocate with our manpower, you know, or we can't, we don't have the manpower or the resources to hand out food every week, but the cathedral does that. So let's go help the cathedral. Let's pull that way. So even a small group, you can have an impact and ripple, a ripple effect to the larger cause. I love it because this is what we're trying to do. It really is because um, churches get caught up, they have to do everything. Yeah. Instead of saying, let's do something, let's find where Jesus is calling us and let's do that and then let's help those 
other churches. Let's take, and if we do that, we're really tightening those tendons and those ligaments, creating the body of Christ, where we support and uplift one another. That is one of the most, I love it, because this is what we're trying to do together. And we've talked about it often. So, thank you for saying it. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I want to thank you, my brother, so much for being here with me. Uh, I, your voice has added so much to this series. And uh, as you know, you're very special to me. God bless you, and may God always hold you and journey with you, because it is only through Jesus that we're transformed.